one billion years in the future, Earth still exists, though maybe not as we imagine it. Eras upon bygone eras worth of technology have been left behind by eight previous and fallen civilizations. It is now up to the denizens of the Ninth World to piece together what was left behind. Perhaps they're looking to carve out their place in the world, or simply to survive a land riddled with weird and unearthly dangers. Or perhaps still, they just wish to learn and uncover the secrets of the Numenera. Whatever it is this new era of adventurers and heroes is looking to discover, they'll have to dig through the imprinted echoes of the past to find it. An amnesis. Noun. The ability to recall past events. Hello, and welcome to Imprinted Echoes, a family-friendly Numenera actual play podcast. I'm Zan, and I'll be your GM. Thank you for joining us today, and as always, we hope you're staying safe and healthy. Continuing through the maze of rods and odd structures, our group is becoming increasingly worried about what they're encountering and how long it seems to be taking to get through to their destination. What else will step in their path before they're able to find Dremlin and save Hadik? Ghosts are fought, rests are taken, and structures are explored. Join us as Nehemiah, Smallren, and Jory press onward. You all stand in the middle of one of these hallways of the maze of the Blade and Terstice, having turned a corner and seeing one of these ghost-like figures starting to cross the walkway. It stops, sensing something nearby, turns to look at you, and rushes towards you. I need everybody to roll initiative for me. Woo! That's a 17 for Jory. It's a 6 for Nehemiah. 15 for Spirit. Out of game. This creature is called, I'm going to pronounce this Abacus, but I don't know if that's actually how you pronounce it. A-B-Y-K-O-S. Abacus. 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 So. Spooky is what it's called. It is a spookster. So, top of the round. Brex on offense or defense? I think defense to start off with while we're figuring this thing out. Okay. Oben actually hesitates for a moment. Normally, he kind of just rushes in and and starts swinging, but this time he kind of hangs back for a moment and says, I don't even know if I can hit this thing. Mm -hmm. Only one way to find out. And then does like rush in and try, but his glaive just goes right through it and he kind of like slides through to the other side and is now on the opposite side of it. And you do see it phasing in and out at different times. This may be a job for your staff, Jory. Oh, yes. If you are looking to make an attack, it's going to be level four might. I'm a good old thwack. Fail with a seven. So you miss. What does that look like? I think I just get the timing wrong of the phase in and out. And you end up on the opposite side along with Oban. I feel like I stumble into him accidentally. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He catches you and kind of like pulls you upright a little bit and goes, it's all good, let's go. Small one. The only thing she can think of to try is she pulls out her sonic blade. Sure, yeah. In the hopes that maybe one of the dimensions that this character is inhabiting will be affected by that. Um, and so she's going to swing at it with the sonic blade. Absolutely. So the difficulty is going to change based on a couple of things that this creature might decide to do. Right now, level four. I will spend for a point of effort. Success with an 11. You are able to hit it a little bit. It doesn't do a ton to it. Mm -hmm. Normally, this would do how much damage? Four. Okay, it does half that damage. Okay. Because it does kind of match the dimensional energy, but not as thoroughly as something like Jory's staff would. Right. So you end up doing two damage. Mm -hmm. This creature decides to go. And you see it kind of shift phase a little bit into something kind of in between states, a partially solid state. And it makes a lunge at Smallren, who is nearby. You will need to make a speed defense level two. Success with an 18. Right. You are able to easily get out of the way. It does actually hit you a little bit, but kind of passes through you. Like, it's supposed to make contact, but kind of like glances off or kind of through you rather than making full contact. 
It seems in this partially solid state, it has a harder time interacting with solid matter around it. And for the sake of mechanics, it changes its phase at the beginning of its turn each time. Nehemiah. Gonna hit it with my big stick. Big sticks is good. That's the uh, the tool that I have in the toolkit. I right. think so. Well, uh, it, is, it is at least partially solid because it, it solidified enough to hit me. Right. Yes. And I am going to spend for effort, which actually with my new um, superiority and heavy bladed takes it down to zero. So I do hit, <laughs> but I am you going- You don't, unfortunately. <laughs> really? Because in this state, it is a level seven. Ooh, it's a level seven. Oh, yes. I thought it was a four. It is a four. Oh, and it's that's right. It's... In substantial state. Uh, so it is in a, a partially solid state currently. Well, then. Glad I took that superiority then. <laughs> we roll. We still hit with a 12. Yes, good. Yeah, so you catch it as it's kind of like in between mm -hmm. these states and give it a nice solid hit. And that's six damage, right? Yes, it is. Wonderful. We were back at the top of the round. Brex on offense or defense? Keep them on defense. I think defense, yeah. All right, they will stay on the defensive maneuver. So Oban goes to try and hit this time and once again misses. Mm, suppose it's my turn. I'll readjust, mm -hmm. square my shoulders back, twirl again, and take another dive. All right, might level seven. Um, fail with mate. I think I timed it the opposite bird direction. <laughs> like I, I leaned too heavily into the anticipation of the vase and um, and you kind of like hit your staff into the metal wall and it like shakes in your hand for a moment. It's moving. She's gonna go in with her sonic blade again because that seemed to work last time. I'm going to spend four effort. We cannot. That is a failure mm. with a 14. However, I would like to spend for late inspiration. She's been trying to watch really carefully, trying to time this right. So I'm going mm -hmm. to spend three intellect to try again with an asset on that okay. same strike. And that is a failure with a seven. Roll 20 sit. No! <laughs> At least it wasn't an intrusion. Roll 20, more like roll seven. Roll seven. Roll seven. It's been a lot of roll one. Oh, wow. Well. Mm. Yeah, so Smallrin dashes in and basically, like, first makes kind of a jab and realizes mm -hmm. she mistimed it. And so she, like, repositions herself and jabs again, and it still just doesn't connect. This thing still stands in front of you and, again, looks like it is shifting its phase, this time into a completely solid form oh. in front of you. There is no translucency to it. There is no phasing to it. It is a completely solid creature. And Jory, I need you to make me a speed defense level four. I'd like to do that. Speed defense. And use the asset from Brex. Brex. Yes. Oh. Hey. Boop. And boop. And success with a 15. Woo. Awesome. This thing does not try to hit you. Instead, it seems to be reaching for your staff. Oh. Mm. Mine. And it like reaches out for it to try and touch it. And you're like, ah, no. No, thank you. And pull it away in time. Uh, Nehemiah. Okay. Now it is a level four to hit it. I will spend again, turn that into an auto hit, and I'll roll to yep. see if I crit. I do have a roll hit an 18, so that is going to be eight damage to this thing. Amazing. That is literally exactly, you guys are very good at hitting the exact amount of damage. Love that needed for us. To down something. We try so hard. I think as this thing phases back in, Nehemiah sees his opportunity, takes one step back, and with one hand, brings the sword spear across and just decapitates this thing. Nice. Its head kind of goes flying, and like the two pieces of it then dissipate, seem to like completely phase out. Mm -hmm. Left behind on the ground after this creature is no longer within this part of your dimension is what looks like a sword hilt. Nehemiah will bend down. I think he's probably the closest, but with the murder and all. Sure. Pick it up. It looks like a cipher of some sort. I'll investigate. Start by rolling me a d6. Six? All right, so this is a level eight cipher. Ooh. Pretty hefty. Yeah. 
looking at it, it looks as though there's a like button on the bottom where like the pommel would be mm-hmm. that would probably extend out a blade of some sort from this hilt. Cool. Cool. Did you just pick up a ghost lightsaber? I think I just found a ghost lightsaber. What you have picked up is a mono blade. Okay. Ooh. A ghost <laughs> It's a ghost lightsaber. It's a ghost lightsaber. In fact, produces a six inch blade that is the same level as the cipher. The blade cuts through any material of a level lower than its own. If used as a weapon, it is a light weapon that ignores armor. If a level lower than its own, the blade lasts for 10 minutes. Cool. And so it is a cipher. It's one use, but it is a ghost lightsaber. (laughs) Strange ghosts standing in mazes, distributing swords. (laughs) Nehemiah doesn't necessarily know all of those details, but you can at least get the details. Like if you press the button, a sword will come out. And if you want to know more about what that could do, you could roll an understanding Numenera check, Mm -hmm. or you can like spend significant time with it, trying to figure it out. Sure. I don't think you had any ciphers on you either. So we don't have to worry about cipher danger. Yeah. Oben's kind of dusting himself off after having like bitten it at least once from trying to swing at this thing and, and missing and falling down. Brex is kind of just like standing there, checking in on folk. Mm -hmm. I don't like trans-dimensional beasties. Uh No, they're not fun to fight, that's for sure. No, no, they're not. Um, Sorry, I felt a bit useless there. Normally it's my forte. Everyone has their days. That is very true. Seemed like that thing was uh, shifting around a whole lot too, so you know, you're good. All right, continue on? I think so. Continuing on, you see a cluster of these rods that at first seems like it might be part of the maze walls, but on closer inspection, as you get a little bit closer, the metal is more of a dull red rather than this kind of like steely metallic color. And rather than being like these perfectly straight sections of it, each rod is slightly bent in several places as though they were jointed legs of some very tall creature. And if you look above it, looking as though it might connect to something, it is this blurry disturbance Mm. in the air above it. Don't like that. Nope, 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 nope. Recommended course of action. I don't like that thing. I say we stay away from it. Yeah. No, I, I think, think we should avoid it at all costs. Mm-hmm. Can anyone awesome. know how to lasso and we can ride it around? Um, I don't know what that thing above it is and why we can't see what's going on above those what I assume is legs, um, but I don't want to lasso any of that. No. no. Brex kind of just keeps walking, finds a side path and just shaking their head. <laughs> mm-hmm. Nope. This was like kind of directly where you were heading, so using BitBit's map, you can find a way around it. It's just going to be a little more roundabout. And you avoid the tangled spider. Hmm. Yeah, no, that doesn't sound like something that was particularly <laughs> sent to kill us. Or well, just like the friendliest thing out of all of them. <laughs> just wants to give you hugs with its incredibly long, creepy legs. Seriously. That's not completely false. <laughs> <laughs> In this kind of roundabout path that you end up taking, you do end up seeing a lot of more mundane stuff. There are sections and little clearings that maybe just have like some trees and like a little grove of plants. There is one that kind of just looks like a a little plateau of rocks and, and grasses and things like that. One of them you go by is one that's kind of more like an open field kind of thing. Not huge, like we're talking maybe at most like 50 feet by 50 feet-ish in kind of an organic kind of shape around where this clearing is uh, of the wall surrounding it. But as you look at it, this looks like it was maybe at one point used as a camp. Like you can see areas where there might have been campfires and remnants of where tents might have been set up and like areas that have been like of the grass that have been flattened out as though people had been like setting things up on it. And you also notice there are some blue and yellow crystals that seem to be growing. Hmm. Well, I'm going to roll perception first to just kind of look around the quote unquote camp and see if this is a familiar setup. I don't even need you to roll for that. I could just know. Yeah, it's familiar enough. Like it is not like, oh, Dremlin sends his camp up the exact same way each time, but there is this kind of general layout where circular sections where there might be a bunch of tents kind of like 
in one section that are maybe surrounding a group of people, and that's pretty telltale of the way he runs things. Hmm. <sighs> yep, this was them. I would like to also do a perception check just to see if I can figure out like which direction they went and if there's any like remaining surveillance left here. Like, is okay. there an intent to come back, basically? Gotcha. Do you have any sort of tracking or anything like that? I've trained in perception. Okay, this will be a level five. Cool. I will spend intellect to bring that down a pair of steps and we will do an intellect roll. Success with a 12. Wonderful. The encampment seems to have been left in a state that was not like they intended specifically to come back here, but it was not cleaned up in a way that they were not trying to be tracked. Gotcha. It was not a hide our tracks, erase all traces, but it was not necessarily set up as a, we will be coming back here as a stopping point later. They are very confident in their position at this point. They have no clue that anybody is coming after them, or at the very least, they're not worried about that reality. Correct, one of those two. Cool. Cool, um, all right. And, and you can kind of see that there is at least evidence of like some group of people like moving out from here and going the direction you're headed. Cool. While we are doing this search, I want to send Bit Bit back up to do another scan. Okay. I want to see if the walls are moving on us and mm. essentially be able to do a save and compare between last map and this map to see what may have changed. Sure. You send Bit Bit up, does another scan. Uh, it takes a little while, like five, ten minutes to do a full, yeah. complete search and comes back down uh, and you compare the two maps. The walls have not moved, but the spider has. I hate that. Interesting. Everything else is the same. No, love it. Just, just that moves. Oh, I hate that. That that might be the worst answer. I've been in mazes that move. That's all right. Mm. Do not like being stalked by a spider. And I will say, there's not like it is not necessarily particularly arachnid. Mm -hmm. It is that is the best equation you can come up with. Is like big long legs with something kind of up top. Right. Spider right. is just a, a descriptor more than it is like, oh, this is a creature following us. Right. I don't know. Saying it's not a creature might be worse. <laughs> it's more structured, to be honest. Okay. It's like a big autonomous mech. Yeah. So what you're saying is it could potentially just be trying to give us presents like the tree. Uh, <laughs> you know what? Go ahead. Go ahead. And uh, if Smallrin is thinking that, go ahead and roll me Understanding Numenera level four. All right. She's not thinking it, but she's not not thinking it. Um, it's a failure with a five. That's not a bad connection to make, but there's no way to There's know. no way. Yeah, there's no possible way to know, especially since we completely avoided it. This is its web. That's why it keeps changing. Oh, my gosh. Hate, hate that idea. I, I kind of <laughs> love that idea. No, here, that's but, but let me rephrase. Chase loves this. <laughs> Nehemiah hates this. Nehemiah is incensed. <laughs> Uh huh. And actually, as you all are standing here, having like gone a little bit ways around, you hear a large impact sound, not like massive thud cannon going off, but like a large creature taking a step coming from down the way that you came this way. Well, this certainly seems to be very much what we were looking for. What now? Guess we press forward. Well, I'm going to investigate the crystals. Mm. Okay. Yeah. These ones are blue and yellow. Um, the ones in the chasm were just blue, but this is less like connected to a person, obviously, and more seems to be like, not quite growing out of the ground, but the way that you might find like a natural crystal structure in geology. Where's my asbestos cloth? Um, Your what? <laughs> my asbestos cloth. I, I need just something to cover my That's, face. Don't put that near your face. No, no, it's to guard against it. <laughs> we built oh, up an immunity. Made out of it. <laughs> okay, I understand now. Never mind. I... Where, where is okay. my salamander oh my fur cloak? <laughs> I need my PPE. <laughs> There's no protective equipment. Ugh. My mask. I need my cloth mask. Um, I'll, yes, that's fine. I'll wrap that around my, my face. Yeah, um, like that's I, fine. Like I did previously. <laughs> and mm. I'll uh, smash one of the smaller ones. Maybe. Blue or yellow. We'll, we'll do blue. You smash it. And uh, again, that kind of like burst of 
dust of powder kind of comes up in the air. You do not breathe it in, but then it kind of like settles on the ground. Hmm. I don't think I have any vials left. Guess I have to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> the old geologist trick of licking I'd be lying it. If yeah. I, if lick I, if the I, rock. Lick the rock. It only works for bone. <sighs> Become the rock. No, don't. That's bad. I don't have anything crystal. This one seems important. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and dump one of the other ones I took from friend previously and just put this in there. And I'll do the same thing with the yellow. Okay. You now have a new yellow and blue memory powder. I will label them as such. When we find quiet time, I'm going to debate how I can interact with these. As you are collecting this, Oban says, is that something we're doing now? Or are we going to continue on trying to find Dremlin and his posse before you try and make work of that? See, I don't know. I feel like any information that we can glean before we get to them is going to be advantageous. So I'd love to know what it is that's in these memories, because it could provide us some advantage. You know? That's my thought. I don't disagree. Perfect. Yeah. Well, they made camp here. They did. I can't imagine they would have made camp in a place that was completely unsafe. That's mm. true. All right. I mean, if you want to check it out, I think now now might be your time. Should we rest then? And I can poke around. At this point, it is starting to get a little bit dark. Not mm-hmm. like nighttime, but like the sun is starting to set. It took you most of a day to get up here. And then you had a couple of encounters. You've had uh, a little bit of traveling in here. So it is starting to be the end of the day. You are more than welcome to keep working and moving through this space at night. You are also welcome to set up camp here. I'll have a sit. Let's do a soft camp, like a dinner kind of break right now. And depending on how long this takes and what we uncover, we may uh, make this a further excursion. Brex helps get a fire going. Oban kind of unpacks various food supplies and sets up like a tent just as like a, in case we want to use it, but does not like go full, all bedrolls, all camp stuff. Folks can start kind of like resting for a little while. Jory, what are you attempting? Uh, scientific method. I'm going to try lots of different things. I'm going to take a bit of water and I'm going to try to mix a tiny, tiny bit with that and see if it reacts to the water. It is strangely hydrophobic. It floats on top the way that, like, cinnamon would. Wow. Uh, next step, let's go through the elements. I'm going to try to burn it. You burn a small bit of some of the yellow and as you breathe it in, you get this incredible wave of nostalgia for something that you've never really experienced before necessarily. It's the nostalgia of riding a wild mean through a large pasture, like a wild mean that you like got a hold of and are like bareback riding quickly through this, like just this wave of nostalgia for it and then it's gone <sighs> as you breathe in the smoke. That was the it. best of times. Wait, no it wasn't, <laughs> I didn't do that. <laughs> You don't get a full memory, but in burning it and inhaling the smoke, it's you get the like vibe. the emotional yeah. feeling from it. Ah, uh, goodness. That was so interesting. Okay, I'll try the blue. That at least gives me some idea. Like incense. So you're burning the blue as well? A sample. You just get a sense of fear that you have no idea what's coming next. You have no idea what your fate is going to be. It is just pure and total terror. Is anyone else doing anything specific as you're, as you're camping here or just kind of like chilling for a minute? Depending on how long Jory's working on this, I've got a 10 minute and one hour recovery roll that I could use. I think Smallrin's probably taking the opportunity to kind of sift through her own poison pack and make sure everything's in order, put together a couple of potential combinations that she could reach quickly if she needs them. Sure. We'll say that you're here for an hour. I think that's okay. yeah. that's fair. Nehemiah will also use a recovery roll. We'll take that nine and that'll get us all the way back to the top. Nice. Not great recovery rolls. Roll 20 continues to scorn me. Mm. After about 30 minutes of Jory working on things and folks kind of like setting up camp, having some food, resting a bit, uh, and kind of consistently hearing these large footsteps coming towards you, you do kind of see one of those large metal rods come into view near the pathway where you are. So the spider is very close now. Mm -hmm. Jory, what else are you doing? I am moving on to the taste test. Oh gosh. 
All right, up we go. I will take pinky, dab pinky in dust, lick pinky again. We'll start with the yellow. Tastes kind of like chalk. Yeah. But as you kind of like put it on your tongue, rather than like the images of a memory, you get all of the physical sensations of it. So with the yellow one, you feel as though there's wind rushing by. You feel a little off balance as though you're on top of something moving. Uh, I feel like I kind of have to catch myself. Well, that was something. Please just ignore me, y'all. Um, I might get a bit sad this time. I will do the same thing with the blue. And again, no emotional connection, but just the physical sensations of what this memory has. You feel cold, you feel tired, just exhausted as though you have been moving for days, weeks, months without much good rest. Your back is sore, your feet hurt. Did I get the impression that these were from the same person or no idea? You have no idea based on what you've experienced, but what you have experienced previously tells you that yellow crystals are from long, long ago, eras before you. Okay, I think I've learned everything I can from these, unless anybody else wants to give it a shot. Not really my thing, I don't think. Uh, no thank you. It seems as if you've done everything that can be done without some kind of special equipment, which I can only hope Dremlin will have. I'm going to try to toy with some things. Um, we're going to continue to rest unless we want to move on. I don't know. I think with our um, encroaching companion over here, we may want to get a, another bit of a move on. As you are looking out, the spider has stopped. Mm -hmm. If you look down the way, like maybe 50 feet down away from you and has not moved any closer. Interesting. Can I make a check to kind of like understand what this thing's intent might be, what this thing could be? I don't have sure. any like inability or anything as far as understanding yeah, Numenera. Yeah. That's definitely what we're looking at here. Yeah, go ahead and make an understanding Numenera level five. Cool. We'll spend for that. That seems like a worthwhile success with an eight. You notice that it was moving towards you and then like stopped a little bit distance away. Zephyr never said anything about it being attacked, just because it was kind of like always around him. Gotcha. You think this thing's just curious? Okay. Um, I'm going to take a moment to, you know, pass a hand over the gray metal implant just because mm -hmm. the blur at the top of this thing is giving mm. me potential interdimensional vibes. Sure. You do not get any sense about it. Huh. Okay. Uh, it does not seem to be interdimensional in any way. In that case, I would like to make a perception check using the Ogrim Orb, telling it to zoom in and focus on anything it can manage to bring into focus, like seeing if I can use mechanical means. I will not even make you roll. It is blurry no matter how you look at it. Interesting. There is a way to see it more clearly, but not from this distance. <laughs> we gotta get under it. We gotta be amongst the legs. <laughs> gosh, gosh, but darn it. <laughs> uh... Do we think it's dangerous? There is a chance that it just seems menacing, but might actually give us an advantage. I like to think that that's the case, because the opposing view bums me out. I'm not gonna lie, this thing still kind of weirds me out, so if you want to get closer, uh, be my guest, I'm staying here. I think perhaps I should. And she gestures to her far mover belt, which I have not used in a minute. I will go and get as close to it as possible, and in the event that something seems to be happening, I can remove myself quickly. Mm -hmm. You sure you don't want me to go with you? I think it would be best if everyone else stayed out of reach in case I need help. I'll stay at middle distance. So Smarin is going to keep one hand on the far mover belt and start slowly walking towards this thing, keeping an eye on it as she goes. You walk towards it and it does not make any movements towards you or any sort of menacing action. Do you get underneath it? I think Smarin kind of circles it first and then when it doesn't react in any way, she does slip between the legs and go beneath the that center blur. Looking up above it, you do now see a kind of red metal body. It is in kind of like three 
lobes almost. And looking closely, it looks almost like they are hollow, like these are rooms. And there is an opening in one of them, a, a circular doorway. It looks as though a ladder is nearby that goes down one of its legs. Interesting. Huh. How how large is this? I think I'm picturing something smaller in my head than. Um, it's about 20 feet tall. Okay. All right. This and is this... giving very Horizon Zero Dawn yes. vibes. Yes. 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 Awesome. All right. Smallerin is going to kind of softly, but uh, enough to be heard, call out to the others. It appears to be some sort of dwelling, maybe. There are handholds going up in the inside of one leg and a door. At that, I think Nehemiah would get closer. No kidding. I'm perfectly willing to investigate if we would like to know what is inside. I'd be willing to go up too. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'm staying down here. I think Oban and Brex staying out here is not a bad idea at all. Mm. Brex just kind of gives Oban a clap on the shoulder. Buddies. <laughs> <laughs> and the three of you... Oh, do you leave? I. We haven't really talked about Tetra Heidi in a moment here, but let's oh, yeah. with Tetra Heidi. Um, I will tiptoe in front of Brex and give them a very babysit, please, uh, <laughs> look, and uh, hold out a sleeping Tetra Heidi. Brex doesn't sigh, but looks as though they have, mm-hmm. and does take Tetra Heidi. <laughs> I'll uh, kind of hop up and give them a, a, a little little smoochy on the cheek. I probably can't reach that high, but I'll do my best. Uh, thank you, and I'll bound away. Can I backtrack and retcon a thing? Possibly. At some point, Tetra Heidi chewed through the pacifier, at which point Smallrin offered a sleeping aid that she did not tell <laughs> Jory was experimental that she wanted to <laughs> test out. Sure. You. And so Tetra Heidi has been snoozing for a while, but is still alive. It works. Yes, yes, yes. That's fine with me. Okay. And the three of you start climbing up this spider leg. Excellent. The door that you kind of enter into is a large, plain, unlit room, barely big enough to fit like three people at once. Like, so you are all kind of like smashed into it. It's not very large, but there are two doorways, one on the left, one on the right, one that gives off a very dim golden light and one that gives off a very dim blue light. Blue or gold? Gold seems to be cheery. All right, let's check out gold. You all enter the gold room, which is a little bit larger, roughly like 10 by 10. So a little bit bigger than um, the one you were in previously. And as you are in there, these red metal tentacles extend out from the walls and try to grab onto you. Everyone needs to make a might or speed defense, (laughs) level five to try and uh, avoid them if you want to avoid them. Yeah, we're going to avoid that. Spending for speed. Uh, Smarin's going to try, but she's not going to try that hard. (laughs) (laughs) Smarin makes a good faith effort, but she honestly kind of wants to see what's going to happen, and that is a failure with a seven. Uh, Okay. Uh, Fail with a one. Oh, Oh, That's Uh, not great. Success with a 19 with a minor effect. Can I negate the GM intrusion? Hmm. But Jory still fails? Yeah. Jory still fails, just not an intrusion. Hmm. Yes. Excellent. Thank you. These tentacles come out and they try to restrain each of you. Nehemiah, you're able to wiggle free and kind of like step back out of the room. You can still see what's going on. Mm -hmm. You're no longer in the room and not being grabbed at. Smaller and Jory, however, you each feel a small puff of air in your general vicinity and breathing in something not noxious, but definitely like this is some sort of weird chemical and you are both knocked unconscious. Oh. Oh, good. Oh, wait a minute. (laughs) And run with me on this. Although you aren't, you can't necessarily tell this, you are also anesthetized. Oh. Um, so you are, you are like put under right now. This is going in a direction. In the next three rounds, so the next like 30-ish seconds, we'll say, these tentacles, these, these rods spend time 
surgically implanting a gold cross-sectional device through each of your torsos. What am I seeing as this is all happening? So you see them get knocked out, and over the course of like 30 seconds, you see these tentacles slowly start to inscribe something around their torso. Like for Jory, it's kind of like up across her ribs. For Smallrin, it's like more like from like hip to okay. um, like underarm. And it, it's the, the same thing, like these cross-sectional things that are just kind of like inserted into uh, into their body. So. Um, Nehemiah's gonna do it dumb because yeah. this is scary and protective, so I have to. Nehemiah is going to go in and start to like try and pry like these tentacles off. Level five, might or speed. Might or speed, all right. Both the same for me. I'm just gonna make this a straight roll then and we'll see how that goes. That is actually a failure. Okay. You rush in to try and hack these away, and in turn, you are also grabbed up in the tentacles and within a matter of moments also are knocked unconscious. And you don't see it, and you don't feel it, but we get to see that cross-sectional device get started to get inscribed into your torso. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, where we'll leave you off for now, each of you held up in these metal arms, mm -hmm. um, having another device implanted into you, wondering uh, how you'll wake back up. Yep. <laughs> Probably fine. We will be there. Listen, nothing, none of these have been bad yet. So the law of averages says this is the time. Uh-huh. Oh, good. <laughs> I will just say it is a really good thing y'all got your recovery rolls. Mm -hmm. And I didn't do mine because <laughs> I was too busy toying with crystal powder. Well, it's okay. We'll see what happens mine, then. Mine went very low, so. We'll, we'll see, see how this goes. Yep. Thank you so much for listening to episode 128 of Imprinted Echoes and Amnesis. As always, if you'd like to follow the podcast on social media, you can find us on Twitter and Facebook at Imprinted Echoes and our website, imprintedechoes.com. On our website, you'll find links to the Ghostlight Media merch store and our Patreon if you're able to help us out monetarily. And on that note, I'd like to thank two nerds in a pod, Savani and Rin, for their support. If you'd like to help us out in other ways, please take a moment to subscribe to the podcast, leave us a rating and review, and tell a friend about the show. And in a fun bit of news, if you'd like to meet some of our hosts in person, myself, Chase, and Rin will be at a Catacon in Dayton, Ohio, November 8th through the 10th. Check out acatacon.com, that's A-C-A-D-E-C-O-N.com, if you'd like to find out more information about the event. We would love to meet you if you're able to attend. You can also find our hosts on social media, on Twitter, myself at Covered in Sawdust, Chase at TQ Loudly, and Bridget at Really Bridget. You can find Rin on Instagram at Rin Moran. And of course, be sure to follow our network on Twitter, Ghostlight Media, at GLM Pods. Thank you once again for listening, and I hope you'll be back in two weeks to hear yet another episode of Imprinted Echoes. And until then, may your ciphers never malfunction. Imprinted Echoes is produced by Zan Campbell Johannes and Chase Greenley, and is edited by Alex Berkowitz. Original show theme music is by Justin Longacre. This has been a Ghost Light Media production.